Hi there, welcome to this um, video. It's going to be on trig equations. This will be video one of a series of four that I'll be making up to try and explain how to do these. So what we've got here is I want to try and explain the method for trig equations and why we do it. I feel that when I was at school, I was just taught the method and accepted it. I didn't understand why I was doing what I was doing. So I want to try and get this across visually by using the graphs. So on this diagram here, you should be able to see that I've got the sine graph in red. I have the cos graph in blue. And then this tan one in green. And I've just put them all together on the one diagram. Now, I'd never normally do that, but it's just to help explain what's going to be happening. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to then split this up into four. So I'm going to put in some lines. 1 through the 90, 1 through the 180, and 1 through the 270. So if we look at this, these, in, these boxes individually, you'll notice that all of our graphs within this box here are positive between 0 and 90. So every single graph is positive there, okay? In the second box, between 90 and 270 you'll notice only the red one is going to be positive so only the sine graph has a positive answer between 90 and 180 if you look at the third box only the tan graph is positive within there and at the fourth box only this cos graph Okay, so this is become, going to become very important to soon. Okay, now when you solve a trig equation, you are ask to solve an equation something like sine x equals 0 0.2. And you would go do shifts of 0 0.2 and you would get an answer of 11. Now looking at this graphically, 0 0.2 is roughly about there. And on the red sine graph, there is your answer there of roughly... Let's, let's round it up to 12, okay, because it's 11.5. So that would be your answer there. But going further along, if you look at your sine graph, there is another answer here. But how are we going to get that answer? Now, the way you get that answer is using symmetry, right? This hump, as you want to call it, that goes from 0 to 180 is symmetrical. So this line is symmetrical. So if this answer here is 12 away from 0, then this answer here is 12 away from 180. So to get that second answer, they do 180 take away 12, which is 168. Now, if you want to double check this, feel free to go type in sine of 168 and it'll give you an answer so close to 0 0.2. So to get your second sine answer, we're doing 180 take away our calculator answer. Let me explain it again using the sin, uh, the cos graph. So the cos graph, let me just change this to cos up here. So I'm just going to keep with the 0 0.2. So if I was asked to solve cos x next to 0 0.2. So 0 0.2 is roughly here again. So using the cos graph, there would be an answer here, pretty close to 90. And there would be an answer here just after the 270. Now if we do shift cos of 0 0.2, to need this whole number, it gives us 78. So this answer here is 78. Now using symmetry again, this other answer, well, if this is 78 from 0, this other answer will be 78 away from 360, which is uh, 282. So this other answer here would be 282. So your calculator gives you the first answer, and to get the second answer, we do 360 take away what we got. Okay. So the last one to show you is the tan. So if I change the equation, I with a 0 0.2. So if I do tan x is 0 0.2 now. Look at the tan graph. So this is the one in the green. There's an answer here. And there's an answer further over here. So if you do shift tan of 0 0.2, it gives you 11. Now, this one isn't so much as using symmetry, but you know your tan graph starts to repeat after 180. 
So then this bit here, uh, this, this line here is the same wave as before, only moved on 180. So if this one here would be 180 add the 11, which is 191. And if you want to check, go press tan 191, it will give you 0 0.2. So what's happening is your calculator gives you the answer that comes out in this first quadrant here, the one that I've written all underneath. And then if it's a sine equation to get the second answer, you do 180 take away. If it's a tan question to get the second answer, you do 180 add. And if it's a course one, you do 360 take away. And I've got this written again on the next slide a bit neater. So what I've done is I've just kind of put that a wee bit neater onto this diagram here. Um, be a good idea to copy this and get some different coloured pens out to denote the different graphs. Now, this diagram can be shortened down a lot clearer into a smaller one. So feel free to pause copy. If not, let's move on. Okay, so technically the, the, the main part would be to remember there's always going to be two answers when we solve a trig equation. The one our calculator gives us and the second one we get from using this little table here. Now there's a lot going on in that table, but it's very handy to try and memorise this. And I've always got it up in my classroom wall. So it just reminds us, what they've done is they've put it uh, going in anti-clockwise fashion. So you'll see my arrow there saying that it's going this way. And it goes from zero... 180 is halfway around and then obviously 360 when it comes back and it just reminds us that our calculator gives us the answer between 0 and 90 to get the sine one that was doing 180 take away to get the tan one you were doing 180 add your answer and to do the cost one you were doing 360 take away now a short way to write it this is how we're going to write it at the start of every question is we're just going to write a s t c and i put the 180 there and i put the zero there and because it's going anti-clockwise, this one in here where it says sine is before 180. So you take away for your answer. This one here for tan is after 180. So you add for your answer. And the cost one, you have to just remember that's 360 take away. Now, different ways of remembering the order that goes in this little diagram is a lot of teachers call it a cast diagram because you can hopefully see the word cast coming out there. Um, I call it the all students take care one because it's all sine tan cos is the order it went in in my previous diagram. So let's have a look at some questions in, exa uh, in theory. Okay, so this is what a trig equation looks like. It says solve your equation sine x equals 0 0.5 for x being between 0 and 360. That's how you say that little thing out loud. So that tells us, first of all, that's your clue to use the all sine tan cos table. It also tells us that they want all the answers between 0 and 360. And remember what I said, your calculator will only give you the first answer, the one that's between 0 and 90. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite my equation. So I've got sine x equals 0 0.5. To get what the angle is, you do sine with a wee minus 1. Now that stands for inverse. So you do that of 0 0.5. Now if you go to your calculator and do shift sine 0 0.5, now your shift button is up the very top left corner, so you do shift sine of 0 0.5, it gives you an answer of 30. Now I'm not going to write x equals 30, I write AA that stands for acute angle. So the acute angle that comes out is 30. Sorry, I just wrote the 0 0.5 again. So it comes out that your acute angle is 30. So to answer the two questions, your first answer there was 30, and you can see that, that clearly matches my diagram. So I write that x equals 30 for my first answer. And to get my second answer, because I'm doing an equation with sine in it, I'm going to use the sine box. So I should have ticked off that we were using all and sine here. So the all answer came out as the 30. The second answer comes out from the sine box, which was doing 180 takeaway. So I do 180 take away 30 and I get x equals 150. So my two answers are x equals 30 and 150. And I underline them to show that I know that they are my two final answers. You might put a comma in here as well. Okay, so this is the first one is your all answer and the second one is your sine answer using the table. And just to prove on the diagram, remember we said if your first answer was 30, that was 30 away from zero. Using symmetry, that one would have been 30 away from 180, which is 150. 
Okay, the next one is going to do the same equation but with for cos um, for 0 0.5. Now, I've chosen 0 0.5 just because I know these give us nice answers. So we've got cos x equals 0 0.5. First thing you do is you work out what shift cos of 0 0.5 is. So that's cos written with a wee one. So inverse cos of 0 0.5. And I write acute angle because this isn't my final answer for x. The acute angle you calculated gives you there is 60. And if you look at the diagram, that's there. That clearly is your 60. So I'm going to do my little table, all sine, tan, cos. It's a cos equation, so I tick all and I tick cos. Because we're looking for when um, your cos graph is positive 0 0.5. And the answers will appear in the all and the cos quadrants. So I've got, technically I've got my first answer. So then I write x equals 60. And then for my second answer, cos box was 360 take away. So I do 360 take away 60, which is 300. So my two answers are 60 and 300. And again, looking at the diagram, using the symmetry, this one was 60 away from 0. This one was 60 away from 360, giving you 300. So really it comes down to remembering this table and how to use it. That's your little trick or your cheat to help you remember what sums you're doing for the second half. Okay, for this one we're going to do tan. This time we're going to do solve tan x equals 7 over 2. So the first thing we do is we do x equals inverse tan Sorry, of 7 over 2. Now I choose to just write that as 7 divided by 2. And I think it helps people remind how they're going to type it into a calculator. If you're confident with your fraction button, you can do just shift tan fraction button and put in 7 over 2. You might want to change it to 3.5. It's entirely up to you. All right. But remember, 7 over 2 is just 7 divided by 2 anyway. One other thing to point out is if your calculator is a bit older and doesn't open a bracket, when you hit shift tan, you have to put a little bracket in there. OK, so anyway, when you do that, you get an answer of 74. It's the nearest whole number. So our acute angle is 74. Now, this is a tan equation. So I go all sine tan cos. I tick all and I tick tan. Now, tan was after 180. So it was 180 plus we're doing here for the second answer. So our first answer in the all quadrant is 74 degrees. Our second answer is 180 plus 74, which is 254 degrees. And underline your answer so we know that there are two clear answers. Sometimes in the exam, people will have three different numbers all over and we're not sure what the final answers are. So just, that's a good wee tip to underline it. One last equation is I just wanted to put in another one with a fraction with no diagram going on again. So we've gone back to do another sine one. So we do x equals inverse sine of 6 over 7. And remember, I said 6 divided by 7. You could, in term, this time if you wanted, write it like that. It's up to you. The acute angle that comes out when you do that on your calculator, remember you're doing shift sine and 6 divided by 7. And remember, there should be brackets coming up on your calculator. If not, you put them in. And to the nearest whole number, this gives us 59. Using my diagram, all sine, tan, cos. There was my 180. Sine was before 180, so we take away for the second answer. So our first one from the all quadrant was just 59 degrees. Our second one was 180 take away 59, which is 121 degrees. Okay. That video has been useful. I hope maybe the explanation at the beginning helps explain why we're doing the second bit. Some of your teachers might just say this is what we do and do it. That's fine. But what I've got is a couple of examples there, different styles of sin, cos, tan, some with fractions, some with decimals. And then if you want to pause and try them on the next slide, I've got the answers that you can check them. Bear in mind, I've done all my answers to the nearest degree. Some teachers will ask you to do one decimal place, but to be fair, nearest degree is perfectly okay. Thank you very much.